Hi, and welcome to our second uh, video. It's uh, lecture two, and what is a watershed? Everyone lives in a watershed. You live in a watershed, and part of this module, you're going to identify what watershed you live in. Maybe you already know, and that's great. But do you know what watershed College of the Redwoods is in? That's something that we're going to answer in this module and in this short lecture. So let's first talk about what a watershed is. It's an area that captures precipitation and drains it to a low place out to maybe a body of water, the ocean, some low topographic place, um, a sinkhole. So captures water, drains it, and lets it go into a body of water. It not only drains water though, because it drains sediment. So those are like small particles that have been eroded off the watershed, sand, silts, and clays, materials like um, pollutants and nutrients and, and all other kinds of things that are gonna move with that water. So, and remember this water is not only moving on the surface, but also at the subsurface or in the ground. So a watershed has distinct, what we call topographic boundaries. And topography just means talking about um, features on the landscape. So uh, a watershed has these ridges on either side of it, these high points. Um, if you see my arrow there and that yellow mark um, uh, boundary that's going around this watershed here, that is following the ridge line. Um, and that's the high point of the watershed. Sometimes those high points can be difficult to see if you look at this diagram below here, this shape um, where you have a watershed that's really wide and it's hard to distinguish those ridges. Um, just goes to show you that watersheds can um, look different and that's something we're gonna talk about soon. But let's, let's uh, define some other parts of our watershed I can get myself out of the way. I'm going to go off the screen here for a second just to identify these parts. The top of the watershed where um, it's either a water source or the point of um, collection is the headwaters. And this is where um, the water is starting and will be flowing down that stream. Now, when that stream gets to that body of water, wherever it's going to release all that water. That's called the mouth. And so those are two terms we'll be using in this course is headwaters and mouth. And I'm going to talk a little bit about these other parts of this diagram here. Um, something else we look at, and I'm going to talk about a little bit backwards here is uh, when you have some stream, and this could also be a watershed um, contributing to a larger stream, that's called a tributary and where that tributary meets the larger stream, that's called a confluence. So when two um, bodies of water, or two flowing parts of water meet, that's called the confluence. And then that, that stream or um, body of water that's flowing down here is called a tributary. So those are some terms you want to know, um, especially in our lab when we start delineating watersheds. Watersheds um, can be huge. They can be tens and thousands of acres like river basins. And they can also be very small, which sometimes we call um, sub watersheds. And they could be like a few acres or less. Um, usually a larger watershed does have quite a few sub watersheds in it. And uh, you'll be able to identify that. So here's an example of a river basin. A basin is just a very large um, watershed system um, and uh, is based on, on a major river and major ones in our country, we like the Mississippi or the Colorado or the Columbia. And so those, um, river basins have multiple, multiple watersheds in them. And I'm going to show you a visual of that here in a moment. Um, I just think these graphics are amazing, this art here. And um, if you click on this link, you can go and see river basins all over the world. Obviously, this is just the United States, but really look at that Mississippi. It just um, 
is overwhelming how large it is and all the connections that are being made there. Um, all the different states um, over here, you're going to have the Missouri going into the Mississippi, the Ohio River, and then the main stem of the Mississippi there. You can also see the Columbia River and the Colorado River Basin. Um, just that all the connectivity that you can see in there. And, and I love the colors and the visuals. Here's another picture of um, the same kind of artwork is uh, California. And I just highlighted some of our main rivers north of us. Um, maybe some of you already know the Klamath River up there. And this little one there would probably be the Smith. And then we have the Eel River, which is just south of us, south of the CR campus, just over Table Bluff Bridge. And we'll talk about that in a moment. And then in the Central Valley, you have really important, the Sacramento and the San Joaquin River, which um, are have been integral to fish um, over the centuries, but since we've been using so much of the water in these rivers, the fish are not doing as well. So here we are um, at College of the Redwoods, and that's that X right here. So the College of the Redwoods is part of the Salmon Creek watershed, and the Salmon Creek is part of this um, larger Humboldt Bay watershed. So it'd be a sub watershed in there, and there's four watersheds here. And these are the four watersheds that we're going to be talking about a lot this semester and that um, you guys will be working on your watershed projects on um, either one of these watersheds. So um, we'll be talking about that later on. But we got Jacoby Creek, Freshwater, and Elk River and Salmon Creek. And that X is College of the Redwoods. So as I said earlier, just south of the Salmon Creek watershed. And if you look um, anywhere on campus and you look to the south, you should be able to see this ridge called Table Bluff, um, which extends over here. And then just on the other side of Table Bluff down where Ferndale is, um, you'll see the mouth of the Eel River and the Eel River watershed uh, extends uh, quite extensively south of us um, all the way to, gosh, Lake Berryessa, um, I can't exactly remember where the headwaters is, but that's a good question for the class. So that's, that is watersheds. Now, um, watersheds, I already talked about hydrology. Um, watersheds are a great basic unit of study for hydrology because all those processes that I talked about of uh, the hydrologic cycle, those, um, can be studied in a watershed. So you can study how much precipitation goes in the watershed, how much evaporates out of it, um, how much infiltrates, uh, how much is stored in a watershed. And so you can look at all the features of that watershed and and study the hydrology. It's, it's just a natural place to study the inputs and the outputs of the hydrologic cycle. So that's something else we'll be focusing a lot on in this class, the flow of water in watersheds. Okay, I'm just going to summarize here and we're going to be obviously looking a lot more at watersheds and especially in our lab activity this week. So a watershed is a basin, a catchment. If you look on the USGS website, which I'll give you a link to, they have a picture of a swimming pool showing you um, how it's a place where water collects and then it moves. It moves out and into another water body. Parts of the watershed you should know our headwater, mouth, the tributaries, and the confluence. And that no, some watersheds are sub-watersheds, even though, you know, when I think of just this big watershed, we can identify smaller sub-watersheds in there. And um, that's something we'll talk about more because we'll talk about how to do studies in watersheds. And then College of the Redwoods is in the Salmon Creek watershed. So um, one of the activities that you're going to do in this part of the module is to find what watershed you live in. And I, I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing your responses in the discussion. All right. Take care, guys.